express to the beach. The coaches may not be speedy, but at least they're air-conditioned. Hmm, a streamlined locomotive to match the passengers. What a train, and what service. A sun bath on the way to the beach. At least you can't do this in an upper berth. The girls seem rather frantic to splash in the blue sea. If they actually get wet, it'll probably be a miracle. This way, please. Look out, girls, you'll get your feet wet. In the motor capital of the world, they're trying something new in a campaign to make careless drivers and absent-minded pedestrians stop, look, and listen. This roving voice of the police is a watchdog of traffic, giving orders at just the right time to make both drivers and jaywalkers safety conscious, like this. Please, lady, always look at the traffic signal before you step from the curb. Red signal lights mean that pedestrians as well as motorists should stop and wait. Mr. Motorist, be careful. This is the voice of safety speaking. Do not double park your car. When you do, you not only violate the traffic ordinance, you also create a traffic hazard. And is his face red? The traffic officers are finding this a good way to save wear and tear on their pencils. And it's a lot quicker than writing tickets. And so, around Detroit, the voice of safety travels. A constant reminder to motorists and pedestrians to think, not once, but twice. <laughs> The 1936 National Championship model airplane meet gets underway with all the thrills of real flying. 300 model airplane builders from all parts of the United States, Canada, France, and England with models of just about every type of plane built anywhere in the world. A real gasoline engine. Only one cylinder, however, but it has a real spark plug and it sparks just like the big ones. It has to for a perfect takeoff like this. Look out below. Not all the glory goes to the boys. This member of the fair sex built the entire plane herself. Here's the most exciting of all events. The endurance flight with the hardest of all takeoffs, rising from the ground. Time is clocked on each entry. A plane must keep within sight of the judges to remain in the contest. And after 30 to 40 minutes in the air, not many come back for a perfect landing like this. Uh-oh, almost too late. The family car seems to have been converted into an airplane carrier. The boxes in the luggage compartment back of the rear seat aren't shoes or lunch, just the spare parts and repair department in case of a bad crash. Got away in first to figure out the fuel supply. A half ounce of gasoline for every pound of plane. Four drops less than a teaspoonful. At that rate, he gets about 412 miles to the gallon. There's a simple adjustment on the motor to fit the grade of gasoline, just like the octane selector on Dad's car. And now, after all this excitement, it looks like our little entry got off the course. At times like this, a contestant begins to believe his plane goes a bit too far. But all's well that ends well. Little Willie, Sammy, Johnny, Henry, Cuthbert, or whatever his name is, gets back his putt-putter all safe and sound. It's really very simple if you have all the equipment and know how to work it. The surveyors are first on the job. The drill truck hoists the drill over the surveyor's mark. Water from the tender softens the hard ground, and down goes the drill, about 20 feet. Meanwhile, the crew on the shooting truck gets out the dynamite and the firing box. The recording truck arrives and hooks up the detectors. Four detectors are placed just below the surface and all hooked up to a camera. 
After inspecting all connections, the observer climbs in and sets the camera. Four pounds of dynamite in this charge. The shooting crew is all set to go. But let's see what happens underground. The problem is to locate the hump in the rock strata. The oil bed is usually closer to the surface at that point. The sound waves go down to the solid rock, hit the hump, and bounce back up. The photograph of the echoes is developed on the spot. From the little humps in these lines, the engineers can figure the exact location of that big hump underground. And with the record down on paper, there's nothing more to be done. So off in a cloud of dust rolls the caravan. There's another job waiting for them several hundred miles away. At home aboard, with all the comforts of traveling over the highway, Mr. Percy Hunt of Buffalo, New York, now goes to sea behind the wheel of a motor car. During the week, Mr. Hunt sells automobiles. And like the postman who goes for a walk on Sunday, Mr. Hunt gets out his floating motor car on weekends and takes another gliding ride over the waters of Lake Erie. Ventipanes do a double job here, keeping out spray as well as draft. The six-cylinder valve and head engine has been transferred directly from the car to the boat, even using the original rubber engine mountings. However, a couple of hawsers make the best parking brakes. Whatever the weather, both driver and passengers cruise over the lake with all the comfort of motoring along the highway. No hills, no stoplights, a driver's paradise. Just one big boulevard with oceans of parking space. The cruiser is 35 feet long. It weighs 5,000 pounds. Average cruising speed is 18, and top speed, 20 miles an hour. What a perfect car for the streets of Venice. Mickey is also very fond of dominoes. There's nothing better than a good game of dominoes. Mickey likes all the boys at fire station number 10 in Minneapolis. But most of all, he likes best the domino player. So the boys play dominoes, and Mickey displays great interest. Oh, yes. There's one thing Mickey likes better than dominoes, and that's fires. Oh, boy, does he like fires. Gangway for Mickey the Pole Cat. Come on, Mickey. Don't be so camera shy. There's work to be done. There's nothing faster than riding with the chief. Here, here, keep that mouth shut. You're supposed to be excited. And say, where's your hat? 